Hi, my name is Dan Nigro, and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Control Components at Omron Automation and Safety. In today's YouTube video, I would like to walk you through the advanced setup of our H5CX-N multi-function timer. Before we begin the basic setup, I would like to introduce to you the key features of our H5CX-N. First is the easy to read process value. If you have a four digit model, the process value will be 12 millimeters high. If you have a six digit model, it will be 10 millimeters high. Next, easy to program via the front panel. As you'll see throughout the video, you can quickly set up the H5CXN timer via the front panel via four toggle switches. Next is the tri-color display. The tri-color display is programmable and the benefit of the tri-color display is that it allows you to see where you are in the timing sequence from across the room. Other key features of the H5CX-N are the universal input it will accept an MPN or PMP, and this is depending on how you wire the unit. Next are the output types. These are model number specific. We have a contact output, which is a single pull, double throw, rated for 5 amps, or a transistor output, which features an MPN open collector. For those applications where you need key protection, we do offer this in our H5CX-N. Key protection can be programmed by using the switches in the front of the timer or the top of the unit slide setting. Once again, this is dependent upon your application and how you would like to set the key protection modes. Last is waterproof protection. Our H5CX-N is NEMA 4X rated or IP66, which makes it an ideal solution for those applications where you have a, a moist environment. Our wet environment as well. Before we begin programming our H5CX-N timer, I'd like to let you know there are 11 parameters which may or may not need to be set before you begin your application. Also, please review the factory default parameters as you may not need to change them for your application. In talking to our tech support team, I have found out that many of our customers make minor modifications to the factory default parameters for their applications. All right, now that you understand the key features of the H5CX-N timer, we're going to move on to programming it. And for today's video, we're going to use a twin timer uh, functionality of it because we are working on an advanced mode and twin timer is an advanced mode. Um, but before we begin programming it, let's make sure that we have uh, the unit wired up properly. Uh, on the top of the H5CX-N, you'll see a wiring diagram, and this will help you uh, for wiring your inputs to the timer as well as your incoming power. Once that is completed, then power up your H5CX-N, and when powered up, it should look like the picture uh, in the video right now where you have zeros across the board. So what we are going to do now, we are going to press and hold the mode key for three seconds. Now we are into the function programming of the H5CX-N. What you are seeing before you right now this is the setup for the off time in the twin timer. So, in this functionality, we can do seconds, minutes, hours, minutes, and seconds, depending on which mode you decide to choose. So, for today's video, I'm going to go with the factory default of seconds with decimals. I'm going to hit the mode key, or press the mode key, I should say, 
and now we're going to program our on time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm also going to leave it in seconds with decimals. So we have two independent times. We have, our off time is going to be set at one time frame and our on time is going to be set at another. So that is the purpose of a twin timer is to have two independent times, your two independent off times and on times, whereas a repeat cycle timer, the on time is the same as the off time. So I'm going to press the mode key one more time. You're going to see T-I-M-M. -M. What this allows us to do, it allows the timer either to time up, for example, like zero to whatever your predetermined time is, or from your predetermined time down. And to do that, you press the number one key and set it to down. So for today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it set it up. Next, you're going to see TOTM. And this function is your on off start mode. This will determine which timing sequence a timer will use when you give it the start command. So for today's video, what I'm going to do is leave it in the off state. Just to let you know, the other states available are flicker off start one, a flicker on start one, a flicker off start two, a flicker on start two. So depending on the application, you could determine the timing sequence of the timer. And for today's video, I'm just going to keep it with the factory default. This being the case, I'm going to press the mode key one more time. You're going to see IFLT. This is the input signal width. The factory presets 20 milliseconds, or by pressing the number one key, you could change that to one millisecond. Uh, because we are going to use our, the Omron Z15 basic switch as our input, I'm going to put it at 20 milliseconds. Next, we're going to hit the mode key. You're going to see IMOD. This function allows us to determine MPN input or PMP input. Because we are using a dry contact, such as our Z15 basic switch, um, we can keep it in the MPN mode. I am now going to press the mode key again. And this will take us into the color mode, color display mode. And what this will allow us to do is change the attributes of the display depending on where we are in the timing sequence. Uh, we have three colors to choose from, red, green, and orange. And that gives us about nine different color combinations. Uh, most customers, they, they like to just keep it simple and keep it at the factory default of, of red, as you see before you today. So and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep it at the factory default. SL1H. This is going to allow you to set the upper value limit. And uh, the factory default's 9999. And what this allows us to do is allows us to set the ceiling for your upper limit timing. So therefore, it will not go past that timing sequence. Uh, given today's video, it's okay to keep it at the, at the factory default of 9999 seconds. As you can see, we pressed the mode key. Now we're into setting the upper value uh, limit 2. Uh, once again, because we have two independent timing sequences we're working with, the same would hold true with this function as well. We would set the ceiling um, of where we'd want it to stop in the timing sequence. So seeing how we're, we're in a controlled situation and our timing sequence is 
only going to be a couple seconds for today's video. Um, we do not have to change that. However, if those applications require, if you go into hours or minutes, a high range of minutes, you might want to set the upper limit uh, one and the upper limit two. I'm going to press the mode key and take us into our next mode. Our key protect mode. There are seven different levels of key protect. I strongly um, encourage that when you're setting up the key protect menu to have the e, uh, have the data sheet uh, available so you know what parameters you will be locking out. Um, for today's video, I'm just keeping it uh, the key protect level one, which allows me to have access to everything on the on the timer. Um, but once again, depending on your application, there might be certain parameters that you want to uh, keep locked out. I'm going to press and hold the mode key and get back to the main display. Now I'm going to set the time range. So what I'm going to do here is um, by using the, the numbers one through four, one through four keys, I'm going to set the off time range. So here, as you can see, I'm moving it around by using the one key. So let's keep, let's go for Six point three five seconds. I'm going to press the mode key, and now this is going to allow us the on time. So I'm going to keep it double zeros, and I'm going to keep it for nine point zero zero seconds. I'm going to hit the mo key one more time or press the mo key. So there's our, our off time set at 6.35 seconds. There's our on time. I'm going to press and hold the mo key for three seconds. Okay. As you can see, when you press and hold the mo key for three seconds, we're set. So, I'm going to press the reset key, and don't worry, it's not going to reset uh, our on times or off times. So I'll just hit the reset key. So there we go. There's our on time, and there's our off time. I'm going to begin the timing sequence by pushing the, the basic switch. And as you can see, it's taking place. So it is in a twin timer mode where we have our on time and off times cycling on and off. As you can see, the output light comes on when it reaches its desired time to indicate you that the contacts have transferred. Right now, the contacts are in a normally open state, and as the output light came on, it has now transferred over to a normally closed state. By pressing the reset button, that allows us to bring it back to zero and stop the timing process. So that concludes our YouTube video for the Omron H5CX-N Advanced Setup. Any questions, feel free to contact us at omron247.com or contact your local Omron distributor and or local Omron salesperson. Thank you, and have a nice day.